Hey guys, it's Jake here with the trailer. Today we have a 2019 Ford F-150 and we're gonna be taking a look at and I'm gonna show you how to install these Reese quick insulation um, above bed rails. Adding a set of these above bed rails into your bed of your F-150 is gonna allow you to put in your industry standard fifth wheel hitches. Um, the particular hitch they decided to go with on this one is gonna be a Reese 16K hitch. Um, they're just getting started out camping and they wanted to get into a a little bit more affordable fifth wheel hitch. So they picked up one of these, they paired it with these rails, it pairs perfectly. And then they've got a sidewinder on the nose of their fifth wheel that's gonna work great with both of these. Now, depending on what fifth wheel you have, if you already have one in your garage, uh, we have three different mounting locations. You can see that we are using utilizing the center mounting locations. Um, that is pretty typical. Um, if you get a higher weighted or a higher rated fifth wheel hitch. A lot of times they'll use the wider ones because they want a wider stance. And if it's a really light duty fifth wheel hitch, they may use the center ones um, or the, the closer together ones. But typically they're going to use the uh, center holes on our rails. They're gonna have a very thick, sturdy steel construction. They do have a good amount of weight to them. Um, so you know it's a really, really built well product. It's gonna have a nice gloss powder coat finish to make it look good when you're not using it in your truck. Um, I will say you do have to be careful lifting your hitch in and out of them because they will scratch pretty easy um, because you're dragging steel across steel and that's gonna happen with any type of paint. These rails are gonna fit most fifth wheel hitches including Kurt, Draw Tight, Hidden Hitch, Reese. There is one stipulation, it is not going to be designed to fit the Reese Elite Series or Signature Series. Now I'd have to say probably my favorite part about this kit is going to be the way that it installs. It's going to come with um, some anti-corrosion tape that you will put on the back side of uh, some of the hardware and the back sides of the rail or the undersides of the rails. And that's because the beds in the F-150s are all aluminum now. So you don't want that to start any corrosion because if you ever decide to take this out, you are gonna have the holes to patch up, but you don't want a big corroded spot where both of these rails are. The other thing with it is with any fifth wheel rails, you are going to have to drill holes in the bed of your truck. So that is a, a common thing about all of them. But for this particular kit, you don't have to drill any holes in the frame rails of your truck. And that is very, very nice. You will just use four existing holes in the sides of your frame rails to be able to run hardware through and get your side brackets mounted up. But with that being said, let's go ahead and show you how to do it. To begin our installation, we're gonna be at the back of our vehicle. We just got our two rails sitting on our tailgate. We're gonna take some alcohol and clean off the bottoms of our rails. And this process is to, uh, we're gonna put some tape on the bottom and it's just this plastic tape that comes in your kit. Um, but we wanna make the rails nice and clean so that it'll stick well. And essentially what this is designed to do is it makes it so that your the steel rails and the aluminum bed will not react. So we have to put this plastic coating in between them. So we're just gonna line up these little X's that they have in here with our holes. There is an extra one down here. Just gonna peel this off. Make sure your center crosshair lines up with your center hole. And those are just so that we can still slide our bolts through this tape. Next, we're gonna take those rails, come up into our bed. We're going to need to measure from the end of our bed here to the front of our rail. And our rail needs to be sitting at 28 and three quarters. So we'll get that lined up, line it up over here, and then we need to make sure that we're centered from left to right. Now we need to mark out our holes for drilling. Uh, what we're gonna do is on the back side of the rail towards the tailgate, you're gonna use the two outermost holes. So this one on this side, and then the same one on the other side, and then the center hole. And then on this side of the rail, you're just going to do the third hole in from the outside on both sides of the rail. We're just gonna take our punch here, make some marks, so we get these drilled out. 
Now once we've got our holes marked out, we're going to take our rail, set it aside, and then come back and drill each one of these out to an eighth of an inch for now. Now we need to loosely get our side brackets up in place. You can see here on the side of our frame rail, we're going to have a larger hole on the side here, and then there's a one a little bit further up. And we need to get our hardware fished through our frame through an opening on the inside of our frame rail. Um, there are brake lines on the driver's side covering that hole, so you want to be careful with those. Don't make sure you don't flex them too much. But our front bolt is going to get the round spacer block that has a square hole in it. And our back hole is going to get the rectangle spacer block. I'm going to start with my back hole here. You just fish wire our wire through there. Slide your spacer block in first through the opening and follow it with your carriage bolt. And you just want to make sure that it pulls out to the frame just like that. Now on the back side, we're getting ready to put our bracket up in place. You want to take the large, thick uh, spacer block. That is because the we need to make it uh, a little bit more level for our bracket to fit on here. We're going to take our fish wire, slide it through our bracket. You can look in your instructions to figure out the appropriate bracket for which side, but essentially the uh, the side of the bracket with the single hole here will have to be towards the back and over the frame. You can get it up here, just set it up on top of the frame rail, it'll help hold the weight. We need to get these bolts pulled through our brackets. We've got the rear one pulled out here. You want to put a conical tooth washer with the teeth facing the hitch. And follow that with a nut. Once you get the front one pulled out too, you'll put that same combination of hardware on it. And then after you get this done, you want to repeat that same process on the passenger side of the vehicle. Leave, the, leave this hardware loose so that we can still move this bracket around a little bit if we need to. Now that we've got our two side brackets on, we checked underneath, looked up through the holes, and made sure that our holes are, in fact, correctly lining up with our bracketry. Um, the only holes that are going to line up are going to be your inner holes here on the insides, because this one here is just going to get a spacer block and a washer on the back side, um, the same as the other one. So you just want to make sure these two holes are hitting it. We're going to take a step bit and drill these holes out to 9 sixteenths of an inch. In your kit, you're going to get thicker spacer blocks and thinner spacer blocks. You will, want, you will want one of each in order to make up for this gap between our rail and the top of your bed. You want the, uh, the spacer blocks to engage before the rail will hit the top of the bed when we go to tighten all our hardware down. So what I did was I just took the galvanization tape that comes in your kit. You'll get a bunch of little squares. Tape both of these together. That way um, you've got that separation between the top of our bed and our spacer block. We'll take these. You'll have the little U-shaped cutout in it. Slide it straight in line with the hole for each of your holes all around the sides. And then take one of your carriage bolts and drop it down through the bed. For those bolts that we just dropped through our bed and our rail, you want to take a conical tooth washer with the teeth facing the bottom of our bed and a nut and put it on each one of them. Now we're going to take a 19 millimeter socket and you want to snug up the three rear nuts that we put in, uh, in place just, just to keep that rear rail in place. And then we'll go back up top and we're going to slide our fifth wheel hitch into place so that we can get our front bracket lined up. Like I just mentioned, you want to set your fifth wheel in place. Uh, we just had to hurry up and put ours together uh, because we needed to get it up here, get it in place. And you want to use your fifth wheel to do this, not somebody else's, because the, uh, you'd be surprised how just a small, minute difference in the footprint um, can change it. And if you mount your rails based off of your friend's fifth wheel, that's not going to work out so well. So take your fifth wheel, set it in place, make sure that your front rail is in place underneath your fifth wheel. Everything works. Fine. You want to lift up, make sure that nothing's bound up or anything. Center your rail from side to side again between the wheel wells. Then mark out your holes. For these holes on the front, you're going to want to use the third hole in on the front and back. 
on both sides, and then you want to use the hole in the center that's closest to the back glass of your vehicle. We marked all of our holes. I'm going to lift the fifth wheel out of place just temporarily and then drill out my holes. Then we can drill out these holes to 9 16 once we get all our pilot holes drilled out. We got our holes drilled out up top. We got our rail back in place. You want to put your fifth wheel back in place and then drop your bolts down through your uh, underbelly. We just put a nut and a conical tooth washer on our center one because it does not need any spacer blocks. But if you look over here to the left, our bolts that are dropping down through our brackets, we need to put two of the thin spacer blocks, the U-shaped spacer blocks, around each bolt. So it's going to be sitting up in the corrugation just like this to be able to uh, help make up for that space so that we don't crush the corrugation when we tighten our brackets down. So we'll put two of those pairs of spacer blocks on the driver's side on this bracket and two on the, on the passenger side. Once you get your spacer blocks above those brackets, we want to take that same combination, the conical tooth washer and a nut, and add it to that bolt. With all of our hardware in place, we're going to take a 19 millimeter wrench and we're going to tighten down the 10 bolts that are in the bottom of our bed first, or in, the, in our bed first, and then we'll come back and tighten down our side brackets. We're going to snug everything up and then come back with the torque wrench and torque all of our hardware to the specifications in the instructions. What you want to do first is you want to torque everything down that is attached to this, the black bracket first when it goes up into the, uh, so the six bolts that are on the bottom. And then we're going to do all the ones that go through just the bed and the top brackets. And then we'll come back and do the sides of our frame rail. To get to some of the hardware, you may have to pick up one of these adapters. Um, essentially, it's just a crow's foot adapter. It looks kind of like a crow's foot, but it's got a closed end here. This is just going to allow me to slide it over our nut and then torque them down. Once you get everything torqued down, that's going to do it for the insulation. All you need to do is put your spare tire back up if you removed it and the installation's all complete. Well guys, hopefully this video helped you decide whether or not the Reese quick install above bed rails is right for you in your 2019 Ford F-150.